happen if you put two children in grown men costumes in a room talking about football every week with a microphone? You're about to find out. Thank you very much. We are 92? 92, yeah. 92. Um, thank you very much to Nikki Bocca Glory, which for sponsoring us this week. And welcome, Reese from Heavy Mental Pods. Hello. Thanks Hello. For us. We are here at Twin Maid in Lost Star in Cardiff. Cool. It's going to be a bit different to what you would usually have from us this week. But, you know, like I said to someone <laughs> who asked me today about it, I said, he said, can you do that? I said, it's our podcast, we'll do what we want. Exactly. So we're doing what Freedom. we want this week. So thank you very much for checking us out. And uh, shall I play the music? Yeah, play the music. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm proud and delighted to introduce you today to a Touchline Rant. First and foremost, thank you, Reese. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being thank on. Thank you for inviting me on. Thank uh, you very heavy much. Heavy Mental Pod. Um, appreciate what you do, man. It's always absolutely useful thing to bring just conversation or just any sort of material into the mix when it comes to this and just trying to get to the bottom of like how how people feel um lots of your work relates to uh, it could be anxiety it could be imposter syndrome uh any of these things i believe are useful things so even if any like there's people out there just listening and just bearing it in mind for the first time if they just have these have these feelings and they don't know what to do with them to look a bit deeper within themselves usually yeah, definitely. and how do you like choose the people that you have on it's been a bit of a mix, to be honest. At first, I, I actually wanted to start the podcast about three years ago, mm. but that anxiety that I sometimes suffer from repeatedly mm. yeah. <laughs> that holds stopped. hands with yeah. procrastination <laughs> as well. It's yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I like dip my toe in maybe, yeah. and then think, no, I can't do this. I can't set my own podcast. Mm. <clears throat> and I think um, it was just a case of eventually just taking the plunge just doing with it, it. just you doing just it. the guest side of things i think there were people that i had like a, a kind of hit list of people that yeah. i wanted to ask because i knew either i knew them well enough to know their struggles mm. yeah um or they'd shared it publicly on social media previously and i kind of reached out to a few people but then I was also surprised that once we got the ball rolling a bit, the m- people that kind of came up the woodwork. Yeah, a bit. it's a call to arms in itself. It, yeah. With what we want to do is not just sort of go through and um, have depression, anxiety, mm. but just like the really sort of stuff that kind of doesn't ever get a mention. Mm. Like, yeah. like general um, life stuff. Exactly, as well. And just we want it to be all encompassing, um, both the sort of mental health conditions and stories and things. But I think my baseline is to kind of um, take trauma from my past and reinterpret it comedically. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's a way of processing kind of things mm. that have happened to me. Like, a, like say, you know, I had a blog in the past about anxious scenarios, about having yeah. a panic attack in an MRI <laughs> scanner or, you know, things like that. And I find that once I've internalized it and compartmentalized it as actually you know this is so it's your own larry david kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a nightmare it's, it's horrific at the time yeah. but afterwards it just i don't know it does reframe the event for me kind of thing and mm. this sort of works as therapy when you can actually talk those things through definitely and like idealize that where's a good Big start bucks. where's a good start to for people who aren't really particularly sure of what to do i would say to reach out to somebody that you trust it doesn't have to be major it doesn't have to be like um an on a big online thing where you're yeah. like announcement mm. announcement yeah yeah i've been suffering with it oh it could be that mm. but i think um yeah just speak to somebody that you know and trust and and love and you have a relationship with that you know that they're going to want the best for you and like so receive express that your feelings this thing gets tough for guys to do generally i think it is i think particularly for me, it's something I'm new to as well. Yeah. I've written about it a lot in the past in little bursts here and there. My personality is naturally quite introverted. Mm. And in little bursts through the years, I've kind of said, oh, I've got 
anxiety, health yeah. anxiety, mm. like I've suffered with depression, um, just letting go of like little things. But now it's kind of it's something I do every week. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of yeah. used to it, exposing <laughs> myself on the internet. Well, that's a soundbite. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so that's a clip. <laughs> I feel like things usually start off with identifying your own personality traits. Yes, and what, definitely. And what you, what, what knowing makes yourself, you yeah. and knowing yourself. And like the Myers Briggs test is is a good start, a jumping off point yeah. in terms of knowing what what motivates you, what yeah. makes you tick. If you're introverted, if you're extroverted, like what what you actually need to keep you motivated. Yeah, I think mm. that's a, that's a really good way to start. Um, first and foremost. And then I think it moves on in terms of connecting and just listening to like to 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 someone's story could actually trigger like a cause like call to art. The bigger steps, the first one, that that actual coming to actually telling what is wrong with it, you know, as in what you're feeling mm. and yeah. sharing that, that can be the most daunting thing. But I think uh, one thing I've been surprised about as well is since doing the podcast, the amount of messages that we re receive from people who are like, that really hit home for me, or like one particular line, and it's our intentions with it are just that, like I said to you just mm. prior, is just c connecting with people. Yeah. yeah. That sure. sense of connection, that sense of awareness. Yeah, I think it's something that uh, is becoming a lot more difficult. There's a lot more noise and there's a lot more confusion in the mm. world, what mm. with social media and the way that technology is advancing at a rapid rate, mm. um, it can be harder to um, see through the bullshit yeah, kind sure. of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like when you put people on a pedestal as well, like, um, have you heard of a, this documentary called Sundle Until I Die? Yeah. And it oh, just, yeah. It, I, I, you've I, seen I that? I haven't seen it. So yeah. it, it, like, it just opens up, it opens up the world of behind, like actual, their actual, actual people, these players, yeah. and you, yeah. you identify, okay, well, that could be detrimental or look, looking in mm. like, they suffer as well there's a player was yeah. johnny johnny williams the welsh guy yeah, in yeah. That. so he opened opened up the first time i've ever seen it like re real realistically in front mm. of the camera he went to the into sports psychologist and said i feel like an imposter yeah and i suffer because i'm away from my friends family everything i'm on my own here mm. and i've just got this because i want this but i suffer because like it could be like a losing streak not playing well being injured constantly. The life of a lonely is, is yeah. a very draining life. Yeah, so it just opens up that life. thing, because you, you think of them as, as possessions, they're things. Yeah, you, there's no humanity. There's you don't, not. It, and you they, only see one side of it. Yeah, yeah. And you, like it is a business side, they are commodities, there's a thing we argue about, like saying about it, there's no more loyalty in football. 2018, over double the amount of footballers saw psych, like psychologists and Do therapists. Think, that was like the... Uh, floodgates kind of open with yeah it was, it was a few little huge, ones you know, you know yeah. danny rose saying that he was he got injured and then because he couldn't he play and he was getting behind and he wasn't seeing the boys in the team mm. he got depressed yeah and then his uncle committed suicide yeah. during his rehab and then he came back and he was like i can't play for here and then a club tried to were in talks to buy him and it was taking longer than expected and he rang and was like what's taking long he said oh they've just told me they're just making sure you're not crazy yeah, it's like they're human beings. We have this all the time. Yeah. It's like last week with social media again. It's like players like Jesse Lingard who he posted the ridiculous thing on his it's on, his, debate, on yeah. his Instagram, yeah. where he's just being a, a boy on a mm. lads' holiday mm. with his mates, and his mates, uh, you know, doing stuff to pillows and stuff, and he's yeah. laughing, and it's just yeah. nothing that I haven't done with my mm. mates before, mm. just messing around. Because he's a footballer, people have caused outrage, and it's like, hang on a minute, they're human beings first. Yeah, he's exactly, yeah. Just because he's a footballer doesn't mean that he's, you know, and plus it's social media, we're all learning that talk. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's brand it's new. new. The iPhone's like 10 years old, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Something like that. It's, it's so new. We've it's, got. Yeah. it's ridiculously new, and it's just like... And we live in the best time to be alive. <laughs> everything yeah. is at our fingers, everything is there. Yeah. We live at the, and that oversaturation, I think, has got a, pro, a plays a massive part in people's poor mental health yeah because they the, everything is available to them now yeah when they want it and what they want is now now <laughs> i can t sit here and tell you about loads of footballers who play in the second division in france and wh where their best position is and uh, mm. because of the internet yeah and it's causing it's, over our brains it's i think it's i believe the world yeah. has the world's accelerated and our our brains 
and like oh, exactly fuck, the same. I'm still evolving really yeah, slowly. Yeah. It's mm. we're, we're like cavemen, basically. Yeah, the, the, nothing has changed biologically. This is what's happening now, <laughs> is that we are literally, we're watching the first wheel front. and just, oh, yeah. what's yeah. that? Well, that ends our welcome section. Yeah, yeah. that's a good section, I like that. Next time you go, oh, I'm going to make fun of that footballer. It's, it's a person. <laughs> I don't understand these people, like where no. they have, like trolls, for example, where they have the time to invest. Like, do, do why you, would do you, you spend think, any time on making fun of other people? That's a true person self, though, when they're sat there. Because I have this debate whether mm. you wouldn't do that in public, yeah. but that's no, persona, that's how you'd be. However, that if that's people's true mindset in mm. their so their conscious thought, doing that. Then is that like the the darker like the shadow like the young in shadow yeah, yeah, when yeah. it comes to being in that dark place? Yeah, they being, I'm saying exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. do you think there's there's something to that? Like if it happens in YouTube comments or like to just just like troll someone on Twitter or or any personal attacks mm. that must come from somewhere like somewhere very dark. Do you? Yeah. Hey, it's Mitchell Gard here, and if I'm not on ATR, I'm listening to ATR. So have a think about that. One of the reasons why we like football is the, the, the theatre of it. Yeah. Because that's exactly what it is. Is You have good versus evil, you have grudges, you have backstories, you have all this within the game itself. Um, Camus was asked uh, what he preferred, like theatre or football. He said football all day, every day, because it's more real. Like you, you have that kinship with, with, I with your. I thought you said Camus. <laughs> Albert Camus is different from Lanco Camus. I, I thought you said Camus. <laughs> Get Kanu. your Kanu's and, and Kanu's correct. He said, like, yeah, football all the day if I have to choose because yeah. there's, there's more, more of a, more within that with like working towards a goal in itself. Yeah, I, it's, well, they call United Theatre of Dreams, don't they? Yeah, it's, and it is. It's, I, I, I completely agree. It's like, um, it's that connection thing as well. And like you said, it's got everything, all of the key elements of like a good story. Mm. I've argued yeah. before. In it, I've argued before that football is an organised religion. Yeah. <laughs> and what, I've. What, I'm sorry. Go on. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, when you go to when you go to your club and you go to their home ground and you watch a game and they win, it's the closest thing to a religious experience I've ever had. To come to this stage and actually actually think about like a deeper meaning, why we do the things we do and actually speaking forward of what you actually want to like want to do yeah instead of just go along with it and be agreeable and everything else at what point did you uh, figure out like it, there must be a deeper meaning to to doing things it could be like anything like what you do I think I've been on that path for ages and it's still ongoing it's yeah. still an ongoing thing I think it's that sense of dissatisfaction with the just monotony of having jobs that yeah. just don't have any great sense of meaning to you. I'm a trier, like I'll try different things <laughs> yeah. until something clicks and feels yeah. right. And the podcast is one of those things. Talking about mental health, it just feels right for me. Writing, yeah. comedic writing as well, or attempting to be comedic, <laughs> um, is something that I've always enjoyed. And I think once you get into like, once you find something that you get into a flow state yeah. and you lose track of time. Yeah, yeah. You, you see that trance, you see what motivates you and keeps you in the zone. Yeah. And then you've got no problem in, 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 in speaking forward. Yeah, you kind of know um, that you're in on the right track. We choose our own meaning. Like we give our lives our own meaning by what we choose to pursue and how we, you know. Ev Some remedies to, to hold yeah. it along the way. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm. Okay, so you mentioned it earlier about putting like, bit of comedy into it because yeah you know that that keeps you going keeps me going as well yeah like i think if if culture generally is a remedy for our everyday yeah like which it is and there's many different art forms that i can take like comedy is is my go-to yeah it's totally my go-to and like the deeper meaning of that is like it's a root to your subconscious it yeah. goes deeper than just a laugh because yeah. what it identifies is something deep within it's a good medium to communicate powerful messages i think sometimes yeah, absolutely people, 
Absolutely, don't yeah. necessarily know that they're receiving this People information. People just tapping into it, and I think that's yeah. how it should be. So, like, stitched within the fabric of, like, a, a comedy show, Yeah, I think the subtext should be Moral that Moral messages. Or, Absolutely, yeah. and that's the, uh, that's the power of comedy, like, that I see. And Don Blake. It's a Spurs. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to talk Jean Piagetti <laughs> for a moment <laughs> and discuss. He Spurs? Yeah, he's, probably, he's just signed. Just signed for Spurs now. Um, everything is a game. A everything is a game. So we were at Cons a couple of weeks ago, and I delved into the question, why do we like games? And I think I figured it out. To be honest with you, why? I'll, I'll is tell it you. Thumbs? It's one of the reasons, but there's, uh, there's, there's four particular reasons. If you've got any more, please add in. Okay. Um, we've all played FIFA. Yes. We've, we've, yeah. We're all aware of why we play games. That's a, that is a football game, but it's a game generally. And why, why, why do we like playing? So, number one, distraction. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great distraction. <coughs> it's an engaging distraction. <laughs> like, absolutely, we get distracted all the time. So like, life generally is full of distractions to avoid yeah. actual answers to those questions. Which, yeah. which we usually want to avoid, and it's an easy way of just closing down your feelings. 100%. So again, you shut off. If, if the outside world is too much, and you just go into your man your man dungeon. Yeah. And just, no, in, like, come and just in. lock in, because you're thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. It's an addiction, because you're thinking about, you know, do I pl do I play wing wing backs? What do I do? Like <laughs> yeah. In the back of your head. Three at the back. No, uh, yeah. I can't do no, that. No, I just haven't got the resources. <laughs> I've told you. I've told you. Yeah. So yeah. it's a beautiful distraction for what it is, and we, we, it's engaging. Fair dues. The design is just on point, and the playability. Yeah. That is one thing. Links Engineered into, to be addictive. Absolutely. Yeah, in right. in a way, of, they know what achievement means to you and how yeah. important it is. The so reward system. The, in the, the reward system. That's the second reason why we why we why we enjoy mm -hmm. games. The third, if we're going way way back, is basically a hunting game, right? Yeah. Whatever you play, any any play, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like arrow into target. Yeah. So, like it, it's a weapon That's interesting, to yeah. target. That's what we do, and the human spirit of that is just needs to be connected to so the team play. Yeah. That's why we enjoy communicating for the greater good in terms of hunting circles or whatever. The fourth one. Yeah. It's how we get a measure of a person. What do you think yeah. of that? It's how you react. So I know what type of person you are in a way when you Play smash game. the TV up and <laughs> yeah. throw it against. Or the classic one in <laughs> real time. That's a good time, point. Like, in, if in, you're going to be a good sport. Oh. Absolutely. Mm. And it shows, shows you the character that's, of a person. That's, yeah, that's telling actually because I'm the sort of person who will throw my Ranger. controller down and be like, oh, God's oh, sake. Oh, Ranger. <laughs> how many oh, controllers Ranger. have been through? A few. <laughs> a few. I, I'm, I've, I've um, snapped a couple of discs to prevent myself from playing, and then wow. I've. This has happened a few times. I've had an Xbox One, maybe, I think twice. I've had a PS4 twice, and both of those, to those occasions, yeah, stage. just the snapping of the disc. I like took a picture online. I was like, unfortunately, it doesn't come with FIFA 16 or whenever, whenever <laughs> the last time I was playing it. But here's an Xbox. Please take this wretched device off my hand <laughs> because. It was, I was fully just in that just constant in cycle. Zone, yeah. Addiction, yeah. Uh, to playing it, achievement. It keeps yeah. you playing, That's, keeps man. you in the zone. And it's not only that, it's also in real time when you get a measure of, I think this is one of the reasons why people now take towards Lionel Messi instead of Ronaldo, because there's two different Level types of celebration. Yeah. The celebration is, are you going to be like, I am the big man, take your chair, I don't know why people take their, yeah, take their the shirts whole, off yeah, and yeah. just pull a pose and show muscles seen, to a crowd I've of men. I've never seen yeah. someone, like, mm. I've never seen a wife say to her husband, stay with me, in Sainsbury's <laughs> and go, go get me some red lentils. And he's never come back. And in celebration of getting it right, he's never whipped his shirt off <laughs> in Sainsbury's. I've never seen that happen. Yeah, on a football pitch, it's fine. Mm. It's weird. So, yeah. so you get a measure of the person. Yeah. So if Ronaldo That's is true. like, well, you've told me quite a lot there. If it's Messi yeah. and he celebrates with the team, it's a case of, well, that's really nice because he's aware it's team, team mentality. Player, yeah. Yeah. And like that's how you actually play it. Same you know, with Quan. Harry Maguire. Yeah. Man City or Man United. Mm. Uh, United, cause, just because. There they are. As an ex-glory <coughs> yeah. grabbing United fan as a kid, I would... My preference would yeah. be United too. United? There you go. Right. Interesting enough. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Maguire and lots of them play golf. Um, business people, businessmen usually play golf. Where are you going, man? That's where the business deals are done. It's because, and do you know why? Because you read the type of character before you, what, if you're going to go into business with them. Yeah, so you just see if, okay, well, you've got anger issues and you just, 
<laughs> you he's sort of, very patient. Yeah. Yeah, or if you like, cheat, or if you put your score down incorrectly, he's like, no, I'm not, not going to do business with you. There we are. Everything's a game. Reader's Wives. <laughs> reader's what, wives. Is, what is Reader's Wives? Uh, reader's Wives is question of the week. So I'll explain it to you for those at the back. You ask a question, people answer it. That's the read, that's Reader's Wives. Mm -hmm. Yeah? This what week, we, what we, we said, what football owner story would you prefer to see turned into a musical and why? Great the Glazers, question. Great <laughs> yeah, question. Definitely. The Glazers at Manchester United or Mike Ashley at Newcastle United? We had uh, some interesting responses. The first one, can I have an old-fashioned shout-out, please? Shout out! Thank you very much. Gormley Saurus, who's the official mascot of the FIFA Rampart, <laughs> he says Ashley, because James Corden was born to play him. <laughs> Tick. Congratulations. Uh, That's a very good Jamie, one. <laughs> Jamie McGowan at Welsh Ice. Yeah, nice. Got Jamie. involved and said Mike Ashley, please, with Dennis Wise being played by Danny DeVito doing a Cockney <laughs> accent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We had uh, <laughs> Jordan Lloyd, captain of CSKA Jordan. Sapphire Gardens. Yeah. Sponsor next year. He said the Oysters at Blackpool would be like Lamey's. Slays me. Like the absolute distraction that they could. You know, it would be like Lamey's though. <laughs> and then this is interesting. We're from Nathan. He says United and the Glaciers only if you can guarantee the international and long term success of the musical with all proceeds going towards a takeover. Failing that, let's see the Newcastle and Ashley one. Then we can watch the falling out over what was the better production. That or my personal favourite would be the Sunderland Till I Die musical. <laughs> <laughs> I saw there was some banter by Netflix. Like, there was, yeah. With, when Newcastle, with the, the mad when, it announced, when it was announced yeah. that Rafa Benitez was leaving Newcastle, Netflix retweet, it's tweeted out and said, Newcastle fans, if you need cheering up after today's news, Sunderland Till I Die still streaming. <laughs> Again, it's that, that comedy yeah. angle to hit. That authenticity social Netflix, media Netflix, not only. Yeah. It's universal, right? It is, yeah. They mugged off the whole of Sunderland. <laughs> Went to. Brilliant. Right, but that's Reader's Wives for this it's week. So huge. This is the man who put the A in ATR. It's Mitchell Gad. So what have we learned? We've learned the fragility of the brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. What, what, have, what have we learned? What have you learned? Uh, I've learned that I know nothing about the current state of football. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've learned that it can be fun to cross pollinate and go on another podcast <laughs> even though i was to be con congruent with with the whole mental health thing i was and still am anxious and nervous about like I, it's something that's out of my comfort zone yeah. but yeah learn push yourself out of your comfort zone sometimes do you, do you know lobsters shed their skin i don't <laughs> Go Lobsters on. shed their skin <laughs> with just a little bit of pressure. So, That's take it. ourselves out of our comfort zone. Yeah. Maybe we could start to do that. Someone bought me a card once that had a family of coals, like little pieces of coal, two right. kids and a, and a wife coal, saying, <laughs> don't bother your dad, he's under a lot of pressure at work, and the dad was a diamond. <laughs> Things I've learned. Things, Things you've, you've learned. learned. Okay. Um, we've learned a lot so, this week. Do something creative. Yes. That's, that's what we've learned, right? Have an outlet. Yeah. In, yeah. Because you need an outlet. You need you need to direct energy towards something. Just find out something you actually like. Just just do it. Whatever it is. If yeah. it's, if it's small or whatever else. People we admire. Artists like entrepreneurs. People doing their own thing, finding their own path, like doing things a bit differently. And people who just want to like better the world in some some, yeah. some yeah. sense of the world. Yeah. This has been the strangest yet most pleasant <laughs> surprise of a podcast we've ever recorded. You realise that you can link anything back to football? Yeah, in this yeah really. Should we leave it there? Yeah. yeah. Hi, I'm Mitchell Gann. Whether I'm in the UK, Australia, Canada, Costa Rica, Timbuktu, I listen to Winnish, I listen to a touchline run. That's ATR. Yeah. <laughs>